Welcome back to Nightmind, friends, in Cabin Fever Dream Season. If you don't know what this is or what that means, you didn't watch the announcement video, and now everyone else in the class has permission to point and laugh at you during lunch for approximately 5 seconds. That comes later, however. As far as your catch-up on Cabin Fever Dreams goes, it just means that we're celebrating the change of winter into spring, which tends to make everybody act up a little bit and bring about a dose of April foolery, myself included. So, enjoy the rare, light-hearted range of my dulcet tones, and all the fun that goes with it, because it sure is a limited edition treat. Now, for the topic of tonight's video, I want to bring you something really different, which has had my attention ever since it came across my desk through the Nightmind Index. There are a lot of unique projects on the Index, and I do want to get to quite a few of them, but this moment in time provided the perfect opportunity to introduce it. According to the description I was given for the listing, Moss Flower Pictures is a fantasy journey that puts you in the story as the main character, interacting with mermaids, chatty rodents, and mystical powers. Puzzles and clues will need to be solved in order to progress the storyline. This adventure takes place across several different mediums slash formats but consistently returns to the website and Instagram page. It also totally counts as a moment of excitement and an almost immediate letdown for anybody who grew up reading Redwall novels, but that mention of chatty rodents does save the day. We have been given a trailhead for chapter 1, but before we get into that, I'd like to open the main page, because it's such a great introduction. Right away, we have a bunch of documents here, right? The title of the site, some links, and documents. You can click and drag these to move them around, which is an unexpected touch, and immediately gives the impression of looking at a desk or board covered with this stuff. There's nothing beneath them I could uncover, but that's alright. You can double-click the documents to go to new pages. A few of these documents will lead to pages containing videos, which give ideas about the nature of moss flower through some cinematic visuals. The majority of the pages feature this hand-painted moss flower pictures flag. There is a standout video among the pages, which is quite appropriate given our current theme and timing. A short film called Springtime. It's exactly what you imagine it to be, presenting visuals of flowers, trees coming back to life, the sun, and birdsong, all while an intriguing droning noise plays. The overall look is unique, isn't it? Like it's aged film being used, but translated with modern technology to be presented at its best. The links have their own small touches of mystery. If you go to the About page, you get this watery effect over a picture of who I assume is the creator, Luke Harvey. And if you move the mouse cursor, the water will ripple. The text reads, Cynical, self-critical, unapologetically whimsical. Dreams do not remain with me in the morn, therefore worlds must be created to traverse in the daylight. Red, green, yellow. Enter if you dare. Possessed by the unnatural wonders of sonic auras, mine is the curse. Breathy heights reach for the gap between us, never satisfied, nor desiring to be. This journey is best taken by two. Yeah, that's some poetic riddle type of unfictiony ARG stuff, isn't it? But hey, just what we like to see in this kind of scenario. If we go to the praise page, we see a lot of quotes from people who have worked with Luke. It's a pretty standard testimony collection for any potential future collaborators. The contact page has Luke's contact information, naturally. The work page offers links to music videos and short films, which we may find use in coming back to later, but that will require establishing cause to do so, because the videos all seem to be legitimate projects apart from the story contained in the Moss Flower Pictures site. Here's where it gets interesting. The store page. Moss Flower Pictures is offering a fake found footage pack, separated into eight 3.5 minute rolls, this pack can be used for anything from lyric videos to stock footage to screensavers. The ability to purchase this also seems real, since clicking Add to Cart opens a slide that says Powered by Stripe in the lower corner. And there's an ad for the found footage pack, which covers the content described in text. It also apparently includes trip notes from travelers, which is a very immersive touch. It doesn't have anything to do with the ARG adventure we're here for, but it's still pretty cool, right? The notes from the index submission for Moss Lower Pictures mention that the Instagram is necessary for us to proceed. There is an Instagram story for the fake found footage pack, and from the post it contains, it does appear to be legitimate. This really is a product by Luke Harvey, with some extra creativity thrown in, which gives us an idea of the sort of creative mind we're dealing with. Now, let's get into the main event. The Story Hidden in Moss Flower Pictures, Chapter 1. This can be accessed by double-clicking the official Moss Flower Visitor map. We receive the chapter 1 title image, and, by scrolling down, see our first passage and photo, pointing to a hidden beach. Although the weather is impeccable and the golden sun reflecting off of the sea is creating the most beautiful silhouettes of your friends and family, you are growing tired of the chitter-chatter. 
you decide to wander away from the crowd as you typically do at these sorts of gatherings. As you stroll up the hill, you discover a sign behind the seagrass that you don't recall ever noticing before. Curious, and perhaps a little bored, you decide to follow where it leads. You soon find yourself overlooking a rocky cove, with rather rough waves crashing against the beach. The sun is now gone, and has been replaced by a purple sheet across the sky, casting its hue across the entire earth. After your eyes adjust, something draws your attention by the waves. A girl. You climb down the rocks more quickly than safely, kicking the sand up on your way over. Upon your arrival, you see something peculiar. Is it the looming darkness playing tricks on your eyes? Does this girl truly have a fish's tail instead of two legs? It can't be. That was reserved for stories your mother told you just a few years ago. You get back to the most important task at hand. You begin to press on the girl's chest, noticing how marvelously she is adorned. Her clothes feel of silk, much like her lovely long hair that you had to gently move in order to properly press upon her lungs. Trying your hardest to not be distracted by her wonderful beauty, you lean down to give her some of your breath and feel a tingling as your lips touch. Just moments later, the girl's eyes open, revealing a blue that would make you believe you had never seen the color blue before, staring straight into yours. You are frozen. Never before had you seen into someone's heart, someone's soul, just by looking them in the eye. Yet the girl, who you could now confirm did, in fact, have a fish's tail, backed away from you. You don't know what to say, but you can't unlock your eyes from hers. Before you can muster up any words, she has made her way back into the ocean. Suddenly a wave crashes against your legs, leaving a large oyster shell at your feet. You look up to see that the girl is gone, leaving behind the rising tide. You pick up the oyster shell, hoping to keep it to remember the beautiful ocean girl by. Once you reach the hill overlooking the picnic where you last saw your family, there's nothing left but the moonlight to reveal the still, quiet sand. At that moment, the oyster shell in your hand begins to glow. The image of the shell is different from the photos. We can actually click it to go to a new page. A series of colors flash from behind the shell. Orange, purple, red, red, and then green five times. There's nowhere to go immediately from here, so now let's try the Instagram. There are some photos here with colored dots on them, but the code doesn't seem immediately apparent, like this isn't meant to go with the shell. It's tough on first glance, that's for sure, but in the absence of any other clues on the website or the Instagram, it means that everything we need should be right here. Orange once, purple once, red twice, green five. You could try putting O-P-R-R-G-G-G-G into the address bar, but that does nothing, and it doesn't make sense anyway. Trying to break it down into code using numbers also produces an odd result. The solution does have to do with letters and numbers though, and it's actually quite clever. The letters in the color is your alphabet, and the number of times the color appears is the position. Orange once. That gives us the letter O. Purple once. Same thing, the letter P. Red twice. That means out of the letters R, E, D, we choose position 2, which is E, and green 5. That gives us the letter N. O, P, E, N. Open. Type it into the address bar and... Bingo! Makes sense that the solution for an oyster shell puzzle is to open it though, right? Now we have pieces of a map that we can drag around, so it's time to put this back together. That's better. What have we got here? Besides the obvious color code in the upper right corner that I imagine we will need the Instagram for, we can see our previous location, Hidden Beach, which appears to be our starting point. We'll have to pass through Pelagic Valley, into the villages of Old Stone, encounter something off the shore, and make our way to an island where X marks the spot, just to the north of Marmor Palace. Now for those colors, green, pink, yellow, and teal. On the Instagram we've got this. Underneath the rainbow in Pelagic Valley lies the flower of Alvalus. Fetch one. The R in brackets is definitely what we need, so let's keep that in mind. Pink brings us a picture of the surf. Find Miss Blender Hassett in the villages of Old Stone. So, that gives us R-I to start. We need two more colors, yellow and teal. Here's yellow. Somewhere in the Archipelago Celeste lies a knife with an engraving. That's an S. R-I-S. Wanna try to solve the puzzle ahead of time? Risk or rise? Go ahead and take a guess, and let's see if you're right. Onto the teal. Meet me at the grotto before the dawn breaks on the autumn solstice. Aha! Those of you who guessed Rise are the winners. Let's put that in the address bar and see where it goes. Oh. <laughs> now where? Uh. Maybe we missed something. Oh, 
It says chapter two as the location on the pictures we needed. Okay, let's try that. Ah, password protected page. Here we go. Enter rise and we're in. Desiring not only an adventure, but to see the mysterious fish girl once more, you set off for Pelagic Valley in search of the Flower of Alvalas. Not long into the trails of the mountain, you begin to hear voices around you. This one can help. Get its attention. No, you. What if it eats me? Quit being such a scaredy ferret. Hello, you say to the palms above, where the squeaky voices are coming from. Wait, shh. Can it understand us? No way, they can't ever understand us. I think it can. Say something else. If you can hear us, say tinny tinny boobop. You repeat the statement. Just then, two fully clothed mice fall onto your shoulders. The two introduce themselves as Patch and Hazel, and ask if you can come with them to provide help with a quick favor. Um, I actually have somewhere to be. I'm sorry, you reply as you continue walking with the mice lingering on your shoulders. Where do you have to be? Patch asks. Pelagic Valley, says Hazel as she pulls the map out of your pocket without you even noticing. Oh, what you going there for? Patch inquires. Hey, that's mine, you yell while attempting to grab Hazel to no avail. Not that it's any of your business, but I'm looking for the Flower of Alphalus. Hazel says they have plenty back at their place. If we go with them, we'll get some. So we choose to follow, and along the way they whisper to each other, then turn around and smile at you in unison. At the bottom of the page is a dark blue dot. We know what to do with this. There's no description for this image, no comments, but there is an account tagged on the photo, Kingdom of Myrrh. Kingdom of Myrrh has one collection of photos with text. You enter through golden arches covered in lush foliage, passing then through beautiful gardens towards the chapel ahead. Hazel and Patch nervously lead you to the chapel. Upon entering, you see hospital beds filled with rodents of all kinds. What happened here? you ask. We are known for our healing herbs and spices, says Hazel. Rodents come from all over to seek rest, shelter, and healing, but all of our gardens are continuously pillaged by Valgor the Brood and his hedgehogs. Please help us. Valgor comes every full moon, when the gardens are ripe. You look out the chapel window and see the moon in the deep blue sky, not quite full. So I guess you don't have the flower of Alvalis then? The two mice look down in shame, tracing the floor with their sandals. I'm sorry, but I have somewhere to be, and I don't know the first thing about defeating brutes anyhow. Please, the sun is setting anyways and you need to eat and sleep. We'll offer you our finest cuisine and supply a pillow for you to lay your head, as well as supplies and rations for your journey. You look around at the anthropomorphic rodents, observing their desperate situation. How can I help? There is an ancient scroll that reveals the secret to defeating Valgor, but none of us are able to decipher the message. If you can read it, we can easily defeat Valgor and his hedgehogs. And this is the ancient scroll. I can understand why they couldn't read this. It's tough to know where to even go from here, but if we look around the account a bit more, we can find this. A website page for Valgor. And it's password protected. <laughs> okay, I get it. We need to solve the scroll first. So, my very first instinct is that this is an overlay puzzle. There's a companion piece of this that we need to lay over the image, or the image needs to lay over it. Something like that. Right away, we can examine how some of the numbers have two zeros preceding them, while others only have one, as if they're part of a different series. We can try using this on the map, but it doesn't appear to mean anything. There is a classic solving method associated with this kind of presentation, though. Connect the dots. Seems like a simple solution, but it's worth a try. And actually, there it is. Bow and arrow. Could we try that for a password on the Valgor page? Hey, yeah, that did it. You defeated Valgor and his hedgehogs. Because of your generosity towards the Kingdom of Myrrh, they have gifted you with a rare moss flower doubloon. See that, Redwall fans? You got to save a bunch of mice from some nasty vermin after all. Now, we have two choices. Rest by the water for a moment, or continue the journey. We're not fools, so we're going to make sure we see both options. Taking a rest does put us by the water. It plays the video from earlier that was accessible through one of the documents. Continuing the journey brings us a YouTube link, which is an exciting change.
Did you catch that last frame? That's a Google Drive link. I really wish I didn't have to type this in because it's got a few O's which could be zeros, but luckily I got it on first try. We're rewarded with pages 2 and 14 from A Recounting of Hazel's Adventures by Patch Tenahill. Of course I was mad, Hazel told me. I saved that jerk's butt and the only thanks I get is why are you here? It isn't safe for a mouse. Well newsflash, it ain't safe for you either apparently. I asked her what was so dangerous. It was some kind of sorcerer, I think. Real ugly old fella. Must have been 200 years old or more. He'd make you see things, imagine things, get inside your mind. My guess is he was using the Flower of Alphalus to keep himself alive, so he had to protect it with his sorcery. Too bad I'm quiet, small, and too fast for him to even notice me. I snatched that flower right from under his nose and was out of his sight before he could do anything about it. I wish I could say that was the last time we saw that old man, though. I asked Hazel when they saw him next. We'll get to that, she replies. From here, we've got a lot of lost pages. Then, on page 14, we have this. After being separated for days, I was beginning to lose hope. Hazel began to cry. I've known Hazel almost my entire life and have only seen her cry one other time. She's always been able to use humor to dodge her emotions. Even though she lives for adventures like these, I can see how even Hazel would have a tough time given the circumstances. We take a break and enjoy a cup of clover tea. This might seem like the place to pick up clues to continue on, but I can inform you that it's effectively a dead end. What we need now is a return to the original map, and the descriptions along the way. Our first stop was in Pelagic Valley, where we collected a flower of Albulus, and that's precisely what was described on the Instagram picture for the green dot. So for the next step, find Miss Blenner Hassett in the villages of Oldstone. For Chapter 2, a Spotify playlist was given, Villages of Oldstone. Miss Blenner Hassett is a song on the list, so this is the place to be. The secret here is actually the secret in most Spotify playlists. Read the first letter of every song and you'll interpret a message. In this case, it comes to vimeo.com forward slash pictures forward slash shanty of lost jewels, leading to this video, Miss Blenner Hassett. <laughs>
Another Google Drive link came with this video, thankfully posted beneath the video, providing an image called Key. It's an alphabet set up as a grid. Nice to have a key, but it needs something to match it to. Thankfully, this series of black and white pictures on the Instagram are about to become useful. If you place each image under the key, the white circle will highlight a letter, spelling out the word scroll. Where should it be used? We're actually told directly on the final photo from Instagram. Your journey continues. You now have the password for chapter 3. Where will your adventure take you next? So, let's advance to chapter 3. Immediately, things are looking a bit different. The black background is new. There's a page of the story already open for us. You and Hazel return to Miss Blender Hassett's shanty with a scroll containing a recipe. What could this recipe possibly create? You hand the scroll over to Miss Blender Hassett, hoping she can provide some answers. She peers through her monocle at the recipe. Ah, I see. Hmm, she mumbles to herself. What? What does this recipe do, you ask? This is a very powerful potion. This fish girl you speak of must truly believe in you. To put so much trust in one... Miss Blinner has it pauses abruptly. Do you feel that? She asks. What have you done? Her eyebrows crinkle in your direction. What evil have you brought to my home? She yells at you and Hazel while you both stand, confused. Close the shutters and lock the doors, she orders. Miss Blenner Hassett shuffles around her hut, grabbing ingredients from cupboards and drawers. You've never seen a frail old lady move so quickly. She continues to mumble to herself about how you and Hazel have ruined her day. She stops for a moment to query you. Where did you get this flower of Alvalis? Pelagic Valley, Hazel informs her. Did you defeat Sigron the wizard before you took it? Well, we ran away from him, you say. Miss Blenner Hassett scoffs. You can run away from Sigron. She goes back to her mortar and pencil while talking to herself. What fools. I swear this is the last time I help strangers. Only gets me into trouble. Is there anything we can do to help? You ask. Yes, you can drink this and get out of here, the old lady says as she force feeds you a strange tasting potion. There's a boat at the dock. Go out the back and take the river to the Archipelago Celeste. I'll handle Sigron. You and Hazel hastily make your way to the boat. As you drift down the river, you see shadows and lights dancing throughout Miss Blenner Hassett's shack. And the final page is... Oh, alright, this one might take some work. Or not, considering I can actually just skip to the chase for you. It's Japanese, and it says, Maybe I can help you with this tip if you're wondering what to do next. This number has just enough digits to fill a phone number, and it turns out to be the case. Here's the result. We join our heroes somewhere in the Archipelago Celeste, where they've been wandering around looking for... Well, they don't exactly know what they're looking for. A knife with an engraving. But what does that mean? After days of searching in the summer sun with barely anything to eat, our heroes are desperate for a... Wait, what's that off in the distance? Is it a mirage? Hazel insists that she sees a twinkling on the beach ahead. At long last, sifting through the sand reveals a knife. The knife contains the following engraving. Before the sun rises... But what could it mean? And what's in store for our heroes next on their adventure? Join us in Chapter 4 as the journey continues. The engraving on the knife was mentioned on Instagram as part of the original Colors and Pictures code. So trying that phrase on Chapter 4's password page, we get into Chapter 4. Nice. After the swift relief of finding the knife, hunger quickly sets in. Just on the other side of the peninsula, you discover a ship. There has to be food on there, cries Hazel. No way. Are you crazy? That's a pirate ship. They'll kill you for taking their food. Not if they don't catch me, Hazel smirks as she tiptoes toward the ship. Get back here, Hazel. You're gonna get us both killed. Hazel scurries up the rope leading to the ship as you hide within the tropical brush. A few moments pass before you see Hazel's head pop out from the edge of the ship, taunting you with a fresh papaya. Don't you do it, you whisper yell at her. She takes a bite, making sure you know just how tasty it is. That's when you hear men approaching from the trees behind you. Hazel, stop! Someone's coming! Hazel continues to taunt you. You hide between a thicket of palms as you hear voices passing by. Captain, how much longer are you going to make us search? He's not here, says a small lad. Until we find him. We found the sheaf so he can't be far. This is the bounty of a lifetime, mate. 
I'll finally get to retire if we catch this scallywag. Now quit your whining and fetch me the next set of coordinates. Yes, sir, says the smaller one. The pirates make their way onto the ship as Hazel frantically tries to escape. You hear someone cry out, We've been pillaged! Someone else, It was that rat! You can only make out the tops of heads moving and pirates yelling as you hold your breath, hoping to see Hazel emerge soon. Got it, cries one of the pirates. Your heart sinks, but you have no other choice. You run up onto the ship, knife in hand. You grab the small pirate and hold your knife to his throat. The captain turns around, holding Hazel by the tail. You think I care about that good-for-nothing kid? Go ahead, slit his throat. I'll be having this here rat for dinner either way. Hazel wiggles and wriggles to no avail. Hold on just one minute, the captain says as he slowly creeps toward you. That's an interesting knife you've got there. Stay back, you yell, walking backwards with the pirate still in your grasp. If that knife says what I think it says, then you're wanted for murder. All this time we've been looking, but you came right to us. The queen will be so excited to- Ow! Hazel falls to the ground after biting the captain's hand. You throw down the pirate and make a break for it, but the other pirates grab you before you can escape. Get your dirty pirate hands off me, you cry out. Pirates, the captain responds. Did you just call my men pirates? That's a mistake you'll regret. One of the pirates punches you in the gut, knocking you unconscious. Continuing the story, we come to this page, a mix of text and documents. You wake up in the captain's quarters. Captain Finnegan, you learn from an etching around the porthole. Well, good morning, he greets you, not lifting his head from his papers. Don't worry, I'm just about to take you down to the bilge. I just wanted to let you know that privateers consider it an insult when you refer to them as pirates. We don't steal or kill for the sake of stealing or killing. We only do what the queen requests of us. He nods his head towards a memo on his desk, where you notice a few other peculiar documents as well. There's a memorandum from the Queen, some kind of chart, and a facsimile of a page of the calculations, some of which have been circled. The memorandum is pretty crazy. The Queen has issued a bounty for the King's killer, who must be brought alive to the Marble Palace, and is suspected of hiding in the archipelago. Their weapon is a knife with the engraving, Before the Sun Rises. It's also suspected of holding a curse. Several letters have been circled on this page, and a word is written on the side. Screen. There's a mix of uppercase and lowercase letters. The word screen is a hint on where to use them. It's the end of a YouTube URL. Now, I could show you this entire three minute video of some colors slowly rotating around over each other, but let's not do that, okay? Point is, that's what's happening here, and it must have been meant for the puzzle. And it is. You're going to be impressed at what the solution is, because it's pretty involved. If you guess that we needed to layer the circular diagram on top of the video, you're right. And it's correct to think that we could get some letters when the circles overlap, but there's a direct key method of solving this, thanks to the calculations page. The circle numbers are timestamps. 9, 31, 45, 140, and 246. Together, the solution comes out to power, the password for chapter 5. It has been four days in the bilge of the ship. The sloshing of the musty water mixed with your seasick expulsions have caused the smell to engulf you while you shiver in the corner. You hear shouting from above, different than the normal shouting, more frantic. Suddenly, the door to the bilge bursts open and you see Captain Finnegan's silhouette, backlit by lightning. Come on, let's go. It'll all be for nothing if I lose ya. You clamber up the ladder, escaping the stench, only to be greeted by heavy rains and giant waves crashing against the rocking ship. Follow me, the captain shouts at you. He leads you to a small boat hanging from the ship's side. What are you waiting for, he says. You climb in as he unties the knots, holding you in place. What about you? You shout over the raging storm. I've got a crew that needs looking out for. Just then, a piece of the ship's rigging snaps off and hits the captain in the back. He falls off of the ship while his arms get tied up in the rope. Dangling mere yards below you, you try to reach him in order to pull him back up to safety. Just as you get a hold of him, however, a wave crashes against the opposing side of the ship, capsizing it. Now fully submerged underwater with the weight of the ship pressing down on you both, an escape seems unlikely for either of you. As Captain Finnegan sinks to the bottom of the ocean with the ship, you continue to swim towards him, subconsciously making a decision that can only have one outcome. While you struggle to undo the ropes around Finnegan, you feel your lungs collapsing. Unable to release him, your body impulsively causes you to gasp for air. As your mouth fills with water, you are surprised to taste a familiar flavor, along with the salty sea. 
It is undeniably the same flavor of the potion that Miss Blennerhassett gave you. Along with this comes an unexpected relief. You continue to draw water into your lungs, feeling a sense of rejuvenation with each breath. With this new energy, you are able to free Finnegan from the rope and drag him to the surface of the ocean. Okay, so this is where I'm going to sigh and roll my eyes a little bit. Not because of the story or experience. Those are both going great, I'm really enjoying this and I'm loving the whole project a lot. It's because there is a way forward from this page, but the solution is so completely nonsensical that it's amazing anyone could find it without cheating by examining the page source. The only logic I can give is that you had to, and that might have been the point, because the chapter describes going beneath the surface, and examining a page source is an act of going beneath the surface of a website. The way forward is through a single video link hidden in a single letter, H, in the word breathe, which should be the word breath in the sentence it appears. It's a typo, and that may have been the clue that something was unusual, but it's not the first typo I've encountered in the project, which means it's easy to dismiss the nature of typos as you go along. If you've already learned that a typo is a typo, then the first typo to be important isn't going to strike you as such. I don't know how to feel about this puzzle, honestly. It doesn't really feel like a puzzle. If it's meta, it's maybe a little bit too meta, and the typos that came before it work against the execution. But never mind that. We got this gate open, let's continue. The video, Shipwrecked, is about 36 seconds of footage that appears to be taken from sea. The footage contains blinking lights in four positions on land. And this was a tough one. You really had to take this footage into a video editor and go through it over and over, because it's Morse code based on the way the lights are blinking. A short blink is a dot, a long blink is a dash. Then you had to take the letters you get in Morse code, which immediately don't make sense, and use an additional clue. The fact that they were in separate positions in the lights when they could have just been one single light. The number of the position a letter was in stood for the amount of letters you needed to roll forward in the alphabet in order to get the password for chapter 6. I am not kidding. This was a Morse code with a letter shift on top. The password was Harbor. So, where do we find ourselves now? You and Finnegan wash up on marble steps that lead to a splendid palace, illuminated by the golden sunrise. He coughs up some water and observes his surroundings. Suddenly, he grabs you and throws you back into the sea. What are you doing? I saved your life, you say, climbing the steps toward him. Saving my life doesn't undo your crime of taking the king's life, he replies. Are you crazy? You yell back at him, tackling the worn-out captain. I have a duty to the queen, he grunts. I didn't do it, you exclaim. Finnegan pulls a knife out on you. It's the knife he took from you. Now listen here, kid. I don't particularly want to do this, nor do I personally think you killed the king. However, it is not within my jurisdiction to decide your fate. I am sworn to the queen and must present her with any evidence. Dripping with ocean water, Captain Finnegan escorts you up the marble steps with a knife to your neck. You walk through a majestic courtyard up to a pair of large wooden doors being guarded by two men in armor. The men let you in. You see a woman sitting on a golden throne, surrounded by more women, all dressed in matching white gowns. The woman on the throne, who you presume to be the queen, is very beautiful. She also bears an uncanny resemblance to the fish girl you long to meet again. Captain Finnegan, it is good to see you again. The queen greets you both. Your majesty, Finnegan replies. I have brought someone to you that I suspect may have a connection to the murder of the king. Oh, she answers. So you think this child murdered my husband? Well, your majesty, I... um, I'm not sure. But the kid had this knife when we first met. He shows her the engraving. Interesting, the queen responds. What motive would this child have to murder my husband the night after we first wed? She glares at you, requesting an answer. None, ma'am, you reply nervously. You see, it would make far more sense for someone who would benefit from my husband's death to kill him, she explains. Someone who might enjoy a hefty bounty by framing someone else. You begin to catch on to what the queen is implying, but Finnegan doesn't seem to be following. Perhaps someone who would finally get to enjoy their retirement instead of serving a new queen. She stares intensely at Finnegan as he realizes what she's saying. Your majesty, I, I, I would never. Then why is it that you are the one with the sheath around your belt, Finnegan? She shouts at him. Seize him, she orders the women in the room. The women in the white gowns advance towards you both as their eyes turn black. They begin chanting. The chanting, you'll notice, looks like complete gibberish. It's our next code, clearly. 
You also might have noticed the image here doesn't actually show a throne room, just a room with a lot of columns, with two that are very prominent. That's a clue to the solution. It's a columnar transposition cipher, which is a code technique we haven't seen before to the best of my memory. The solution is found if you enter the words without spaces and use the first eight letters of the alphabet as a key. Turn away from the darkness within you is the password for chapter seven. Enter that and... Oh, wow, okay. We're actually at uh, a hiatus point. I did not expect that. If we look at the route on our map, we're at the palace. So this story is more or less around 75% complete already. It's certainly not finished, but we have gone quite a distance. That was a sudden ending. Uh, not an actual ending, of course, I mean. I'm not sure how to wrap this up now. Um, I think it's easy to tell that I really like this project, though. It's creative, it's unique, it has a nice aesthetic all its own, and in terms of content, it's quite different than what we're used to. I really applaud all the effort that went into this. And for some of these chapters, you can really tell there was an effort involved, because some of the puzzles and their elements were quite involved. It is, genuinely, just a good experience. It looks good, it feels good, and it all mainly happened on a personal website, which is a route that not many people take. Luke is a very talented creator, and I would love to see more work. In fact, why haven't I received any candy bowl submissions yet from you, Luke? You've got the skills and the resources. <laughs> so naturally, we need to see this story finished. Doesn't have to happen tomorrow, or this month, or even this year, but I think we'd all like to see an ending. Right, everybody? Go on, hit the comments section and make your voices heard about the Mossflower Picture story. Let me, and Luke, know how much you want to see the last few chapters. And that's it. Our first Cabin Fever Dreams adventure is currently complete. Thanks to the members of the Vehemence Discord who previously embarked on this journey for their help in some of the puzzle cracking. Thanks to Luke for making Mossflower Pictures. Thanks to all of you for watching. And thanks to my supporters on Patreon. Stick around to the end of this video to see the names of all these awesome creatures of the night. And remember, if you want to support Nightmind directly, you can do so for as little as just $2 a month over on Patreon. It helps me out so much more than you ever know. It's extremely appreciated, and it also empowers the Nightmind Index for new and undiscovered unfiction projects, which made it possible for me to even be aware of Mossflower Pictures and bring you this story. And if you can't do that, but you're not subscribed yet, why are you not subscribed already? You have missed out on so much content. You will be missing out on more content unless you subscribe. <laughs> So please, do yourself a favor, get your night mind fresh, and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and I'll be seeing you again real soon. Sleep tight.